I'm so glad to be here with you today in this beautiful location on this gorgeous day. Thank you, Maria. Nice to see you as well. Pleasure. Well, we are here at Eagle's Wings, one of your most phenomenal architectural achievements, high up in Bighorn Golf Club in the city of Palm Desert, California. Please tell us, how did it come to be called Eagle's Wings? Maria, thank you for asking this. An architecture-loving couple purchased this lot at Bighorn on a hillside. They asked me, what do I like the most about this site? So I asked them back, well, what do you like about this lot when you purchased it? They said, what we like is it feels like a bird flying and we, the bird would see everything around the site and we want that feeling to be conveyed in the design of this home. And that's how I thought of uh, the, the eagle's wings. I designed this house like the wings of an eagle yes. that floats above. And, it's and that's how it came about. Beautiful, it certainly has that appearance. What inspired you, or who inspired you to become an architect? Leonardo da Vinci inspired me to become an architect because he had a deep understanding of art and science based on nature and organic matter that we see all around us. When I see plants, trees, and flowers, I see certain generative growth. In architecture, we call it generative parametrics. I believe that this generative growth is the origins of the future. Ah, that's fascinating. I love it. I'm a big fan of Leonardo da Vinci. He was brilliant. Now, this is quite a spectacular lot. I mean, we're way up high. I mean, as far as the elevation, being pretty much at the very top of Bighorn, and we're on this mountainside full of, you know, very hard granite material, granite rock, it seems like it'd be very challenging to build on. Tell us about those challenges that you had and how you and, you know, you, they were overcome. This lot was certainly very challenging. Let me start with the site. The site itself had a very small pad, a level pad that to build upon on a big 14,000 square feet house that my client was asking for. Also, there was uh, steep slopes, lots of rock outcroppings, and a difficult site. In addition to that, Bighorn HOA had very strict guidelines on the height, the setbacks, and the forms, because this is going to be visible from all over the Bighorn. Uh, so all of these combined together made it impossible to build a big house on this lot. But I thought of an idea after my first visit that I would create something meandering that works around the, the site as if it would be emerging from the land itself without having to level everything and destroy the nat natural setting that it has to offer. So this I took at my advantage and create something unique that could only exist on this lot. So clearly you're super creative with your designs. You must have a certain method that you implement. Tell us, how does your mind work when you design? I found that as human, each in our DNA that responds so well to nature and our surroundings. As a child, when I was uh, watching flowers and nature and forms and colors, I used to love uh, reflections and uh, water and rivers. And as I grew up, I found myself placing uh, reflecting water features in every project that I do. I found that in architecture, there are no boundaries. And when I look at the evolution of my work, I can see the threads and connections that make sense. Fascinating. What was the creative process for designing Eagle's Wings? When I first walked on the site, uh, I started to gather the rocks, interesting rocks around the site. The concept came to my mind. I call it DNA, design, nature, and art. These are the three things that, that are the base, basic of my design. I took my notepad, I carry my pens, and carry my pads, and a, and a measuring tape, and I walked, and 
started to project the space in my mind and the measurement and started to imagine how certain spaces would be located where. After I went back to my office, I started to, to project the spaces that I measured on the site in my mind and it's like creating a holographic image uh, that would transform into what is to come as, as the design as we see it. But this is how the concept started. So something you know, we found really fascinating was when we first were speaking with the, the homeowner via Zoom call, he asked us a question that stumped us. He asked us what we thought was missing, what we saw was missing from the house. And of course, we could not imagine what could possibly be missing with all the amenities it has to offer. And, um, and of course, he told us, but I think I think you know what the answer is, right? Yes. So the whole concept about this, this home, uh, Eagle's Wings, Eagle's Wings is cantilevering out with no supports. So I designed this house that would have no support visible. Uh, that would require structural ingenuity combined with architecture and the form. So if you look around, you will not see any support that visually uh, tells you how this complex geometry being supported. It took a quite a bit of structural gymnastics to, to achieve what we have seen here. And also during construction, it was quite challenging to execute such a complex uh, structure. Uh, as a result, you will see it's hovering about the grounds and about the mountains. And it, it, it's, it's that floating feeling is what the client wanted right from the beginning to achieve like a bird. Of course, that's what makes this property a one of a kind. So you seem to have this um, particular philosophy when you design as far as incorporating the elements, incorporating what's around you, the surroundings, you know, uh, being mindful of the position of the sun. I mean, so many things. So uh, that being said, what was the specific philosophy for Eagle's Wings? So the philosophy for this home was the power of organic design. It contributes immensely to our well-being and our spirituality and our sensuality. I designed this home, the philosophy that it's, it's, it's a free-flowing design that you look around and you see everywhere, inside and outside, in every direction you see. So, so the idea was to create a space and how you feel. It's not about how, how big the house is or how big the room is, but how you feel in the space, in every room you go. It's, a, it's the consistent philosophy that goes around, that intrigue, that's intriguing, and it, it evokes your, your feel, your feeling, how you feel, and evokes your senses. And that, that, was, that was throughout the project uh, was applied. Wow, I feel like I know this property so much better than I did before. And I know that Mike has a bunch of questions he's just dying to ask you. So thank you for answering mine. Hi, Mr. Patel. I'm looking forward to asking you some questions about the property. Thank you for taking the time today. My pleasure. I'm oh. happy to answer. Fantastic. So the owner made a point to strive for perfection in all aspects of the build. And even now, the property is meticulously maintained, even when it's not in use for long periods of time. Can you kind of describe the connection you had with the owner uh, regarding the execution of the build? Certainly. So when I first met uh, with uh, the client uh, at the site and, and several uh, weeks after that, I came up with the concept and the design and the master plan that I had in mind, which I drew up and we had a meeting at the client we arranged to be here at the site. And I roll out the plan and I told them, I want to invite you to come into the future. I want to show you 
what the future space is that do not exist yet. But I want you to imagine with me. So come with me on a ride. And he was very happy to come along. I explained to him, stand here, and this is where the view is from your living room. I told them this is going to be your bedroom, and here is going to be your office, and so forth. And I explained to him that the roof is going to be hovering about this rock outcropping. I don't know for sure that he was grasping the image that I had in my mind because I have not yet shown him all of these ideas on the paper yet. Mm -hmm. I was just talking to him, but I could see that he, he was imagining things. What, I don't know what he was imagining, but I could see a big smile on his face and he approved the direction that I was going. So I could, I could feel that we had a chemistry that was going in the same direction. He also designed the interior spaces of the eagle's wings, from the surfaces to the color palette uh, and the furnishings. Uh, one of my favorite spaces actually is uh, the guest bathroom uh, on the lower level where the walls were hand etched by yourself, uh, which I thought was a really great uh, touch and a little signature of your work to leave behind for the owners. Um, at what point though do you start conceiving the interior design of a project? So my mind works like an x-ray machine when I design when I, every single line I draw has a multiple meanings uh, at the end. So <clears throat> creating spaces, creating, uh, creating the, how you feel in the space is important to me as an interior designer. To me, the interior designer is not just about placing art, placing the, the wallpapers and colors mm -hmm. and things. Uh, but it's a lot more than that. It's about creating spaces for people, how, you, how they would feel within that space. Mm -hmm. And there are five elements that I, I constantly use. This, the metal, wood, fire, stone. Mm -hmm. So when you look around in the house, you will see that uh, theme throughout everywhere, including, including the any time, wherever you see, for example, here we have the stone that came from Morocco. It has a fossil stone, very, very uh, unique and special one. And on the fireplace with the stone, there's wood on the ceiling, mm -hmm. there's metal, and there's water. So all of these elements uh, has integral, plays integral part in the de interior design of uh, my, my work including the art. For example, you see this art in the living room. This art has the pigments that were made, they were brought in from the ashes of the volcanoes and the metal and glass. And so, so even though you don't know where it comes from, uh, it unconsciously you can feel, you can feel the integration of this Zen element into the interior design of the house. So in, a, in addition to that, from the very beginning, I collaborate with uh, many different artists and craftsmen to, to place, for example, you see the door handle of the entry door. Uh, that was, that was uh, not something we brought or bought after the fact. It was planned ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So we had the artist collaboration with it so that they would design a sculpture that would be, that would be part of the handle of the door. So to me, uh, placing art uh, the, in surrounding the areas is, is, um, is not what I do. I believe that the building itself should be a sculpture in which people can experience, explore, and discover. When you finally reached completion here at Eagle's Wings, what was that experience like? At the completion of this house, I felt an unapologetic exuberance. I felt this uh, expression that I could not describe. Uh, it's like uh, watching a child uh, born and then grow to, to, uh, to maturity. And it's rewarding in many ways uh, to have an ambiguous vision uh, that was uh, that was bold but un, 
uh, unseen before and untried before and to have that come to life was a great joy to me. Uh, to see how it blends with its surrounding and the mountains and uh, even from a distance when you see uh, that even though I had vision that this is how it's going to be, but to see it in real was, was uh, quite exciting and rewarding. Well, thank you so much today for taking us through the journey of Eagle's Wings. Uh, we're excited to bring the story of Eagle's Wings to the whole world. Uh, it's a remarkable property probably one of the top properties in all of the Coachella Valley. It's just a masterpiece. Thank you so much for your time today, Mr. Patel. I'm honored to be part of this project. Thank you. Thank you.